all about falling film evaporators. Stay tuned. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Christine Odorfer and I want to welcome our expert Omkar Tawal. So today he will talk about falling film evaporators. So then let's start with the webinar. Omkar, it's your turn. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everyone. Um, the topic of the webinar today um, is evaluating the performance of falling film evaporator configuration with low steam consumption. So falling film evaporators have gained attention in the cane sugar industry owing to the high heat transfer coefficient, the longer operating time between cleans and the possibility to reduce exhaust steam consumption. Few other attractive uh, features include the ability to operate at lower temperature differences and shorter juice resident time in the evaporator, limiting the extent of sucrose degradation. The evaporator station at ICPL Sugar Mill in India comprises of seven BMA type falling film evaporators, which were installed to increase the crushing capacity of the mill from 6000 TCD to 9000 TCD and to reduce the steam consumption of the mill from 36% on cane to 32% on cane. An evaluation of the station performance was undertaken by BMA in December 2019 have been in operation for seven seasons. So the focus of the evaluation was on three topics. A, assessing the heat transfer coefficient of individual effects. B, to understand the effect of scaling on heat transfer performance of FFE1, where we looked at the scale formation as a function of time and the rate of decline in predicted heat transfer coefficient due to scaling and C, exhaust steam consumption, where we look at the trend of the exhaust steam pressure and average exhaust steam consumption over a period of 38 days. The falling flame evaporators at ICPL mill were installed in two phases. In the first phase, five BMA type falling flame evaporators were installed and the old evaporators were used as standby effects. In the second phase, Two additional BMA type falling film evaporators were installed as standby effects. Post the second phase of installation, FFE1 and FFE2 are cleaned after 30 to 40 days in operation. FFE3 and FFE4 are cleaned after 14 to 18 days in operation. And FFE5 was cleaned after 7 to 10 days in operation. The schematic diagram shows the vapor bleeding scheme and the operating conditions of the evaporator station. Vapor from the later stages are used for raw juice heating. One key point in reducing exhaust steam consumption is the utilization of vapor 4 for vertical continuous pan operation for high grade massacrate. The figures shown in the diagram are average values from the period between 13 to 22nd December 2019. So for example, the clear juice flow rate of 359 cubic meter per hour at 15 bricks entering the first effect and the syrup flow rate of 82 cubic meter per hour at 64 bricks leaving the last effect are average values over a period of 10 days. The experimental program was undertaken from 13 to 22nd July, uh, December 2019. Composite samples of clear juice, sometimes referred to as evaporator supply juice, an outlet of each falling film evaporator was collected over a period of two hours. 24 samples were collected in the morning and afternoon shift, with 192 samples collected over the course of the entire program. Each sample was transferred to a 500 milliliter bottle and stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius. The sample was analyzed for bricks, pole and purity. The flow rate of clear shoes, the calendria and vapor pressures and the exhaust steam condensate flow was measured from the DCS. So on the first day of the experimental program, the operating setup is shown on the graph. 
we have FFE 1, 2, 3, 4A and 5A in operation. For FFE 1, 2 and 4A, it is the 26th day in operation since they were last cleaned. For FFE 3, it was the 12th day in operation since it was last cleaned. And for FFE 5A, it was the third day in operation since it was last cleaned. On 14 December, we have the same operating setup as the previous day. The new day is shown in the dark uh, blue color and the previous day is shown in the in the lighter shade. On the 15 December, FFE 4A has been in operation for 29 days since it was last cleaned. On 16 December, FFE 4A was brought offline for cleaning and FFE 4B was brought online in operation. On 19 December, FFE 5A has been in operation for nine days since it was last cleaned. On 28 December, FFE 5A was brought offline for cleaning and FFE 5B was brought online in operation. On the last day of the experimental program, we had FFE 1, 2, 3, 4B and 5B in operation. For FFE 1 and 2, it was the 35th day in operation since it was last cleaned. For FFE 3, it was the 21st day in operation since it was last cleaned. And for FFE 4B, it was seven day in operation since it was last cleaned. FFE 5B has been in operation for three days since it was last cleaned. All right, so coming to the uh, results uh, of the uh, program, the first topic of the evaluation is the heat transfer coefficient of individual effects. Now the heat transfer coefficient here uh, shown are the average of four heat transfer coefficient for each day. So each point on the graph represents four measurements made throughout the day. And the entire plot represents 32 heat transfer coefficient measurements for each evaporator. The heat transfer coefficient is plotted against the date of the test program as shown in the bottom axis. The top axis shows the corresponding day of operation since it was last cleaned. The heat transfer coefficient of FFE1 and FFE2 are consistently high. More importantly, the rate of decline of heat transfer coefficient for both the evaporators with over 25 days in operation since they were last cleaned is quite steady. The heat transfer coefficient of FFE3 was as expected with over 10 days in operation since it was last cleaned. The fluctuation in the results in the first half of the test was caused by inefficient removal of non-condensable gases from the steam side. The heat transfer coefficient of FFE4A was in line corresponding to the fact that the effect was in operation for 29 days. The heat transfer coefficient of FFE4B, however, was lower than expected. The gray plot shows the expected heat transfer coefficient of falling flame evaporator at fourth effect position. Analyzing the DCS data at a later stage confirmed that the cause of the low heat transfer coefficient of 4B was due to inefficient removal of non-condensable gases. So when the switch was made from 4A to 4B, the non-condensable gases connection was left open to the atmosphere instead of the vacuum. The heat transfer coefficient of 5A and 5B were appreciably high. More importantly, the heat transfer coefficient of 5B, which was immediately after the clean, was 1450 watts per square meter per Kelvin at a corresponding temperature difference of 6 degrees Celsius. Moving on to the second topic of the evaluation, the effect of scaling on heat transfer performance of FFE1. Scale buildup on heat transfer surfaces of any heat exchanger uh, is a common phenomena in the cane sugar industry, including robot evaporators and falling flame evaporators. The pictures on the left show scales in tubes of falling flame evaporators operating under different conditions. Now the scale is an additional resistance to heat flow from the steam or vapor to the juice side. 
a simple approach states that scale build up is linear uh, with time uh, as steady processing conditions with regards to the juice processing capacity, the juice quality and the evaporation rate. Now, depending on the conditions, each effect would have its own scaling factor, which expresses the scale build up in time. Now, let's try to look at this in form of an equation. For the total thermal resistance at time t, which is the reciprocal of heat transfer coefficient at time t, the different thermal resistance can be added. So we start with the thermal resistance of the clean conditions denoted by R clean and add the resistance of the scale, which comprises of the scaling factor, the thermal conductivity of the scale and processing time T. Now this linear function aids to assess the effect of scale on heat transfer in falling frame evaporators. Now, in order to build confidence in the scale formation theory, uh, results from a different investigation on BMA FFE is sought. So, Bundaberg Sugar installed a 4,000 square meter BMA designed falling flame evaporator at the first effect position. Bundaberg Sugar and Queensland University of Technology undertook an evaluation program in the 2019 crushing season, focusing on the heat transfer efficiency on the effect of scale on heat transfer coefficient, on the efficiency of the droplet separator, and the juice resident time in the evaporator. Now the heat transfer coefficient of the uh, evaporator immediately after a clean was in the range of 3000 to 3250 watts per square meter per Kelvin. And after five days in operation, the heat transfer coefficient was 2750 watts per square meter per Kelvin. Now, the falling flame evaporator at Bingera Sugar Mill is identical to the falling flame evaporator at the ICPS Sugar Mill in the first effect position and coincidentally has similar processing conditions in the 2019 season. So, coming back to the, our second topic of our evaluation, the graph on the right shows the heat transfer coefficient measurements from the ICPL falling flame evaporator with the blue dots and the heat transfer coefficient measurements of the Bingara evaporator with the gray dots. An exponential extrapolation of the heat transfer coefficient measurements from the ICPL falling flame evaporator to predict the heat transfer coefficient in the early days was of, uh, of operation was undertaken. It is obvious that the predicted heat transfer coefficient from the exponential expression agrees closely with the measured heat transfer coefficient from the Bingera falling flame evaporators. Now, this result puts more confidence in the scale formation theory that we just discussed. So arriving at the, the third topic of the evaluation with the exhaust stream consumption. So the exhaust stream pressure increases from 1.3 bar absolute in the early days of operation to 2.3 bar absolute towards the end of 38 days to maintain the juice processing rate of the factory. The average steam consumption was 32% over a period of 38 days. And scale formation and reduction in heat transfer coefficient, as we discussed in the previous slides, has minimal impact on steam consumption. So summarizing and concluding the three topics that we looked in this webinar, FFE1 and FF2 have consistently high heat transfer coefficients with over five weeks in operation since they were last cleaned. The heat transfer coefficient of FFE5 following a clean was 1450 watts per square meter per Kelvin at the corresponding temperature difference of six degrees Celsius. Now this highlights the significance of falling flame evaporators at a later stages in the set for the high heat transfer coefficient and the subsequent benefits to juice processing rate. In the second topic, we looked at the effect of scaling on heat transfer performance of FFE1, where a theory of scale formation with linear scale buildup with time from the ICPL data was proposed. 
we did an exponential extrapolation of the measured heat transfer coefficient data from the icpl sugar mill to predict uh, to understand the heat transfer coefficient in the early days of operation and the predicted heat transfer coefficient in the early days of operation agrees well with the measured heat transfer coefficient from the bingera falling flame evaporator for similar operating conditions and in the last topic we looked at the exhaust steam consumption where we looked in the trend of the exhaust steam pressure over a period of 6 weeks to maintain the juice processing rate the average steam consumption over the period of 6 weeks was 32% on cane and scale formation and reduction in heat transfer coefficient have minimal impact on steam consumption i would like to thank the staff of icpl sugar mill india for the support during the experimental program and the discussion with the results and i would like to thank my colleagues from bma for organizing this webinar and the support they provided in preparing the presentation thank you thank you so much amka for this insightful presentation um, i think everyone is uh, grateful for these uh, impressive results so for your presentation and um, there are some uh, questions in our q and a part so then let's start with this right now the first one um, you can see it on the screen too um thank you so much amka i appreciate the visualization and <clears throat> smooth presentation do you think that the same results will happen in for example uh, latin america um yes i i don't see any other reason why it would not happen i think the same results could be achieved uh in latin america we have already seen that for similar design um and for similar operating conditions mm -hmm. Uh, the results uh, were similar or at least the trend was similar in australia and in india so i believe similar results could be achieved in latin america yes mm -hmm. okay so then start with the <coughs> second one uh, use of yodo mortar cleaning um, is used i think the um, yes it's hydrojet it's a hydraulic cleaning mm -hmm. um, yes i think the evaporators uh, were first uh, are chemically boiled especially the uh, later stages number 4 and 5 to soften the scale mm -hmm. and after the scale is softened then uh, hydraulic cleaning is undertaken to remove the uh, the scale yes okay that's correct okay so then the next one um the cleaning procedure i'm not sure if this is a question or just in um the in, in sentence uh, the cleaning procedure the cleaning used of with cip this, with yeah. acid by akali um of nach or vice versa i think it's uh, um acid followed by an alkali 20% strength mm -hmm. yeah that's correct okay yeah. okay so details of juice distribution system either multi tray cascade system or multi multi perforated tray system with cut pipes guiding the juice flow in the light ligament space of tubes sorry <laughs> um i believe the juice distribution system um, is a, a bma know how and uh, uh, it would not be um, i would not be able to answer the question um, uh, as directly as uh, the um, uh, uh, the the person is asking but uh, yes we could discuss it more but i wouldn't be able to disclose mm -hmm. the information over the webinar sorry for that <coughs> okay the next one is from david moller um amka interesting results especially in the later effects any comment on the low exit bricks from the evaporators for a factory who is trying to minimize the steam consumptions uh hey david yeah th thanks for the question um uh, any comment on the low exit bricks from the evaporation for a factory who's trying to uh minimize steam consumption yes uh, for a factory that's really trying to minimize steam consumption especially on the plant stage that is a low bricks uh but um icpl also undertakes double sulfitation process Uh, uh which is uh, again treating the syrup with sulfitation and uh, higher the bricks it's difficult uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, sulfur dioxide to be absorbed to remove the color so uh, 64 or 65 is the maximum that they can go in in this uh, case okay okay so then the next one uh, what will be the impact of higher wetting rate the impact uh, the, the wetting rate or, or let's say uh, the the recirculation rate in this case um is set uh by bma or is calculated by bma based on the uh the juice flow uh, that the evaporator is processing mm -hmm. uh so uh, with the higher wetting rate or higher recirculation rate um it will increase the uh, retention time in the evaporator a bit more it wouldn't really help in terms of higher heat transfer uh in the evaporator mm -hmm. okay is it used uh, for sugar cane 
uh, well, I, well the, the factory is processing sugar cane and uh, manufacturing uh, uh, plantation white sugar from sugar cane. So yes, it is a sugar. It, it is used for sugar. Mm -hmm. cane. OK, so then there's a question from uh, Adam Sugar Mills. Um, if we FFE's configuration is quadruple, it runs very smoothly. But if we switch on quintuple effects, uh, effects configuration, we face problems regarding capacity of juice processing and boiling of third, fourth and last effects also suffered. Um, OK, so uh, they're saying that the con the configuration runs smoothly as a quadruple, but it runs very uh, into problems with the quintuple effect. Uh, the configuration will have to be looked upon. We um, I would be happy to uh, answer the emails in detail later on, but unless I see the whole uh, this thing, it may be that the heat transfer area of the complete set is not, um, let's say, enough for it to be a quintuple effect, mm -hmm. or the vapor building scheme has not been uh, uh, completely uh, synchronized uh, for it to be uh, run in a quintuple effect effectively. Yeah, OK, yeah. so uh, please um, stay in touch with us. Um, if you need any further information, um, just write an email to Omka or to me. Uh, you will get our contact details afterwards so that we can talk about it um, in detail. Um, so there's another one uh, from Adam Sugarmill. Since water addition is not good in sugar manufacturing, how can we avoid from this? Uh, well, I believe the question is regarding to the water addition uh, uh, in the FFEs. Uh, if it's re regarding, uh, if it's referring to the emergency water, yes, that is uh, uh, required so that the, FFEs, that, that the tubes don't run dry in case the pump fails or something. But usually we try and uh, have a smooth operation uh, and a steady uh, uh, clear juice tank level so that water is not added into the clear juice tank mm -hmm. level so that you can maintain a steady crushing rate. Uh, with the BMA evaporators installed at ICPL, um, very less um, um, or hardly ever they add water to the clear juice tank uh, mm -hmm. to maintain the level. So yes, with BMA evaporators and BMA automation and uh, BMA engineering, you would not have to add water in the evaporate or on the cages tank so mm -hmm. as so often to maintain uh, uh, the crushing radius. OK. Which is superior tubular FFE or PHE type FFE? Uh, well, uh, BMA does not manufacture plate uh, uh, type uh, falling film, so it could be, uh, let's say, um, not right of me to make a comment <laughs> on, on that design. Uh, sorry about that, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, what evaporation rates you recommend for quintuple effect evaporator for 32% steam consumption? I, I guess it, the evaporation room, uh, uh, is more on the uh, uh, or more depending on uh, what is uh, your cleaning schedule. I mean, if with the higher evaporation rate, you would expect that uh, you have larger scale, a higher scaling rate, uh, which means that you need to clean your uh, your effects more often. Um, if you are looking at, let's say, for the some for a setup like what we did for uh, in ICPL, an evaporation rate of around 30 kilogram per hour per square meter is very typical for mm -hmm. what we were looking at. Mm -hmm. yes. OK, um, whether VKT is used for A, B and C massacute boiling. Uh, in, in the setup that we had or in the operating setup that I showed, a vertical continuous span of BMA design was used for A massacute. Mm -hmm. OK. And there's, there's another one. Uh, what was the payback period for the installed FFE at ICPL? Um, again, that's more of a finance <laughs> question, uh, but I'll still uh, try to answer it in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, ICPL did a lot of uh, uh, modifications and added a lot of BM equipment um, in series of steps, so they got to enjoy the benefit uh, of each of those installations within one or two seasons. But I guess the sales guys would be able to um, uh, show you or, or tell you much more uh, better numbers than I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. OK, if we compare between electrical usage, circulation pump and steam consumption, which one would be more optimum to choose? Uh, well, um, it's it's not exactly uh, uh, the right comparison because uh, it depends on where you want to go. If um, electric generation is part of one of your um, key uh, outputs from your factory, then definitely it makes sense uh, to install falling flame evaporators um, to reduce your steam consumption so that you can produce more electricity. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, that the, the, the electricity generators has to be offset 
with the increased um, consumption of electricity in the in the circulation pumps for the evaporators. Um, but yes, so the, the it depends on what is your uh, exactly what do you want from the uh, from your factory. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of steam consumption, what should last effect uh, temperature you recommend? Uh, well, we we were operating the ICPL uh, evaporator station with the last uh, uh, effect temperature at around 70 degrees Celsius. Um, I think that is possible. Uh, you, you don't need much uh, a larger delta T um, uh, in the falling flame evaporator, even at a large stage mm -hmm. uh, to operate, um, unlike uh, the rising flame evaporators. So you can operate with a smaller delta T, higher temperature, um, uh, this thing where you can also bleed those vapors for other uh, uh, uses. Um, and still reduce your steam consumption. So in this case, we had around 70 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, so there's the next one. How do you see the future of FFE, specially related to its design and functioning? Uh, I, I believe falling flame evaporators uh, uh, is the future. Um, uh, I uh, personally, I did my PhD um, in rising flame evaporators on the robot type. Uh, so, um, and I've learned a robot evaporators and I've worked with robot evaporators a lot uh, before I joined BMA. But uh, looking at the falling flame evaporators, looking at the results that um, I just presented, especially in the last end of the vessel, and even in the first end where we can operate for such a long time mm -hmm. without cleaning, I think that puts a lot more confidence um, in falling flame evaporators, even as I see from a technical standpoint. Uh, that falling flame evaporators are the future um, in operation in terms of reducing uh, sucrose degradation in terms of reducing color formation in the through the evaporation so yes i think that is the the future mm -hmm. of in okay. the industry there's an addition to this question uh, what is the biggest limitation of ffe's design according to you uh, to your opinion uh, um I, I, I will compare it because I, as I said, I work with both Robert and um, FFEs and um, I, I believe uh, all, I don't see any such big disadvantage of installing and falling frame evaporator compared to a robot. Of course, the whole uh, situation has to be understood uh, exactly what do you want and how do you want to go for it. But I believe that uh, if you do decide to go with falling frame evaporators, it could be, uh, and if it's done correctly, that could be, uh, the best way going forward. So I don't see any big disadvantages mm -hmm. personally um, mm -hmm. in installing falling or working with falling free evaporators. OK, the next question um, is from uh, Shahid Anyum. Uh, I hope I spelled the name right. Sorry uh, <laughs> if not. Uh, is it possible to eliminate juice recirculation since it is um, adverse? Um, OK, juice recirculation is not adverse. Um, I think that's um, 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 a bit slightly misnomer or a mis uh, uh, information. Um, the juice uh, coming into the falling flame evaporator is uh, entered in the bottom section and is uh, go going through the tubes with a circulation pump which passes the juice uh, through the tubes um, at a fixed rate uh, the way that we design it so that there is enough juice in the tubes mm -hmm. and the whole evaporator is working. So circulation as such is, uh, is not adverse. Uh, uh, that's not the right. Uh, 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 let's say information. Mm -hmm. this thing. OK. Uh, what is the average evaporation rate in fourth and fifth effects? The average evaporation in the fourth and fifth. Sorry, I'll have to answer that after I look at this thing. I really don't have that on the top of my head. OK. This thing. I, I know the first one because we looked at that much more detail for the scale uh, formation theory. But for the fourth and fifth ones, I'll have to look at the evaporation rate. For the fifth one, I think it could be somewhere around 10 or 12 kilogram per hour per cubic uh, square meter of evaporation rate. OK, uh, but number four, I'll have to check. Yeah, yeah OK, so then we will uh, give you the information afterwards. Uh, you can find it at the end of our presentation um, that we will get uh, per email. Um, the next one uh, also from uh, David Moller. Um, Omka, what was the total temperature different uh, differential across the set during the test period? What was the DT for each stage? Uh, the total temperature difference across the set was we had around the, the steam. Uh, let's say from during the experimental program, we had the steam at around um, 125 to let's say this and the last effect vapor was 70 degrees. So we had around um, let's say 35 degree mm -hmm. uh, temperature difference across the whole set. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. OK, so there's the next one. What is the scale difference by using salpitation method and carbonation method? Uh, well, 
I have not really worked with carbonation methods, so I can't really answer that. Uh, the scale in the sulfitation method, you get uh, largely calcium sulfide scales mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, you have your uh, lime addition and your clarification with lime and uh, SO2 bleaching, and you end up getting in the first two or three evaporators, we get end up getting calcium sulfide scales, uh, this thing. For carbonation, uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't worked with that method. Okay. Um, why distribution is not equal, same time choking or cure of tubes? Uh, okay, so I'm guessing he is referring to juice distribution. Uh, with BMA juice distributions, you don't get choking of tubes, so I'm not sure what that, uh, 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 this thing is. Uh, the person has has experience with uh, BMA evaporators getting choked. We haven't really seen this thing. Our juice distribution is quite uh, uh, profi proficient enough uh, to have a much better distribution without tubes getting choked mm -hmm. up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, why distri uh, Sorry. <laughs> have you calculated the loss of sugar in FFEs? Um, yes. Uh, well, uh, we have. Uh, that would be the next webinar, I, I, I would <laughs> say. Uh, as part of the student program, we are also looking at the sucrose losses uh, uh, across the evaporator station, um, uh, but we haven't uh, really finished our uh, analysis and the uh, the work to present the results. But uh, I, uh, let's say like in the next six months or one year, we'll be able to present another uh, paper or a webinar or something which would, um, let's say, show the results of, our, of the sucrose losses across the evaporators. Mm -hmm. Do we recommend uh, mixed flow evaporation? I do. I don't think I understand the question. If the person is uh, can retype the question and again come back because I don't know what he means by mixed flow evaporation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, please uh, type in again, maybe a little more details, so that an Omka can answer your question right away. Um, how about six effects FFE compare with five effects FFE? Which one would save more steam consumption? And how much does it save? Um, again, the, the whole station will have to be reconfigured and calculated re again as to how uh, uh, this thing. I really don't see, uh, uh, this thing. Having more heat transfer area means uh, you can, um, uh, the, the juice processing capacity will increase and you will be able to operate at lower temperature differences. But falling from evaporators have the ability to operate at lower temperature differences compared to rising flume. So, you don't have to go to more number of effects to increase your processing capacity uh, uh, or you can install a, a, a quintuple effect with the correct heat transfer this thing and still operate at higher capacity mm -hmm. or, or capacity that you would want so you don't have to increase uh, the the quint from quintuple you don't have to go to a six triple okay uh, when compared to semi kestner how about performance of ffe uh, well semi kestner again uh, yeah, it's a type of rising flume evaporator uh, uh, with four meter long tubes, uh, if I'm correct. Um, again, their performance and uh, this thing, just be, uh, based purely on, on the installation of the uh, semi uh, I, I guess it, it, it still uh, has a larger footprint than uh, falling flume evaporators. Uh, this thing, uh, the heat transfer coefficient of semi at least what I have um, experienced uh, in the Indian sugar industry, um, uh, is good, but the heat transfer coefficients are not as high as uh, falling flame operators, but I could be wrong also. So uh, personally, for uh, for me, I think I believe uh, falling flame operators do um, have much better advantages uh, in terms of uh, operation and uh, uh, let's say um, uh, other factors as compared to semi mm -hmm. Okay, I think there's the um, addition to our mixed flow uh, evaporation question. Um, it means clear juice will be fed to the third effect oh. and exhaust steam shall be fed to the first effect. Okay, so um, I, I believe, uh, yeah, that, that there is um, this sort of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a theory that a mixed flow might uh, help in reducing, um, let's say, a process losses uh, in terms of sucrose, this thing. But I believe uh, the retention time in the evaporator, in the falling flame evaporators, um, is low enough for all of these fa uh, factors to be let's say quite low than rising flame. I don't believe uh, mixed flow evaporation as uh, the person is uh, suggesting uh, would really have a, a major impact on the mm -hmm. uh, on the performance uh, or in terms of uh, process losses in the evaporators. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, what are your views about juice distribution systems in FFE? 
Well, uh, a, a very uh, just in that the, the distribution system has to be quite robust. It has mm -hmm. to be quite uh, good uh, so that uh, you don't uh, flood the tubes uh, with this thing. It, it, it has to uh, 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 be good enough so that you can uh, still increase your recirculation rate uh, uh, to the point that you would want and still be able to operate. So yes, it's an important part of the uh, of the complete design and, and has to be uh, 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 sort of or paid attention to it when uh, designing it, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about twofold juice circulation versus normal circulation? Uh, sorry, again, I, I'm not sure what he, he means by twofold. If he just means doubling the uh, juice circulation of the incoming, is that what he means or uh, normal? So if he can retype the question, that would be great. Yes. Okay. Um, Adam Sugarmills is asking, um, how can we minimize or eliminate water addition in massacute manufacturing regarding steam economy? OK, so if he's regarding the water addition in terms of uh, the moment water in the pans, uh, then that's a completely different topic from uh, the evaporators. Mm -hmm. um, I think, believe he's uh, um, referring to the uh, water addition in the massacute uh, for the pan stage. Um, um, BMA uh, batch pans, this thing are quite efficient enough. They can operate without uh, much of water addition, but I think that's a separate topic from the evaporators. It's mm -hmm. more from the pan topic. <laughs> OK, so there are not only uh, questions, but also some uh, comments, um, for example, from ICPL. Okay. Um, they think that was a nice presentation. Yeah, so thank, thank, thank you, guys. <laughs> I think that was a lot of help from them. Yes. <laughs> OK, um, what is the best temperature of exhaust steam to be maintained to avoid from uh, sugar degradation? Um, well, uh, as you said, in, in, the, in the start of the campaign, uh, when we started ICPL, the exhaust steam pressure was, was quite low and this is uh, 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 this can only be uh, undertaken or this low temperature can only work when you have falling flame evaporator set up. Uh, for rising flame, this would, is a very low temperature to work with. Uh, but I believe uh, the, the effect, I think going above 125 degrees Celsius, again from a completely academical point of view, um, is, is does not uh, provide any much benefit in terms of heat transfer coefficient and sort of increases the sucrose losses. So yes, I would not recommend going above 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, this thing. That's what, let's say, the research has told us. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have an internal separator or external separator? We have an internal separator. The next one, how can we avoid black spot and syrup outlet from evaporator? which is appear when any sudden stoppage or startup plant operation or shutdown, note we do uh, CIP regulated, and operation according to BMA parameter temperature pressure bricks. Okay, so the question is how can we avoid black spot in syrup outlet uh, from your which appears when any sudden stoppage or startup plant operation or shutdown. Um, sorry, I'll have to look uh, exactly how long are you shutting down on, uh, do you get it in normal? Um, maybe you can analyze uh, the scale when you're cleaning it to see mm -hmm. if um, um, all the scales are being removed. Um, maybe when you stop or start uh, uh, or stop, start up again, uh, the scale is not completely removed in the initial cleaning and that sort of comes out in the, this thing. But I cannot give up, uh, let's say, a, a straight answer unless I see the whole picture. Sorry. Yeah. So the same for you. Please uh, get in contact to us um, that we can answer your question in detail and get some more um, information about uh, the problems um, you have. Um, more comments for you. So nice presentation. Uh, the webinar reception uh, quality is also good and the questions are well answered. Yeah, th thank you. Thanks. Um, I think it's um, some of the last questions. What should be preferable tube thickness um, size for 600 m FFE like why is 1.2 or 1.5 millimeter? I'm not sure about the tube thickness. I think it is one point. It should be 1.5, but um, I can answer that after talking to our design team. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's 1.5 mm of tube thickness for the 600 uh, square meters. Yes. OK. So let me have a look if I have any more questions for you. Um, we answered this right away with the internal and external separator. This was answered. Um, I have some more. Is there a danger um, of sugar loss at high temperature at FFE? Um, yes, uh, um, at high temperature, there is always the danger of sucrose degradation. 
the more important point is the uh, the resident time at that high temperature. Mm -hmm. So the longer you expose the juice at that high temperatures, the more losses you start to get into. So the um, so we, but we cannot completely um, avoid high temperatures. We need those high temperatures for our operation. So the so the trick is to reduce the resident time, mm -hmm. um, and that's what falling flame evaporator does as compared to uh, rising flame evaporator. That it reduces the uh, resident time in the evaporator so that uh, you, uh, the juice is less exposed to those high temperatures for uh, for less time mm -hmm. and that reduces the extent of sucrose, sucrose degradation in the in falling flame evaporators as compared to rising flame evaporators okay uh, comparison uh, color production in ffe and robot again that's part of this the the further study uh, of this program mm -hmm. i haven't really arrived at numbers to uh, give it out yet i'm sorry <laughs> okay does the effect of tube dimension similarly affect uh, in falling film as in your thesis in my thesis okay that's an interesting question i looked at the um i would uh, not be able to uh, i wouldn't i would answer that uh, directly I, i would say no Uh, we have we do have uh, standard tube dimensions for uh, BMA falling flame evaporators. Um, uh, this thing, but uh, no for for rising flame evaporators, I think the whole um, boiling uh, mechanism is different, um, where the tube dimensions really come into play. But for falling flame evaporator, no, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say. Okay, uh, two more questions. Um, then our time is elapsed, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, we will do it like uh, last time and answer all the questions right away um, after the webinar and our presentation. Um, what is the optimum pressure and temperature of exhaust steam required at, F at FFE's Calandria? So. Yeah, but uh, uh, sorry, the question is incomplete. At, at which uh, effect position? If uh, sorry, so exhaust steam. Okay, so that's number mm -hmm. one. Um, again, so uh, in the beginning. When the effects, uh, when the number one effect was clean, we started at uh, 1.5 uh, bar absolute pressure, um, uh, exhaust pressure, and that was this thing. Uh, the pressure will only increase as the evaporator gets more scaled, and you need um, a bit more pressure to maintain the juice processing rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what type of entertain entrainment? Entrainment. entrainment you, you not entertainment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what type of entrainment uh, do you entrainment. use? Uh, we have a BMA designed uh, juice entrainment system. Uh, in our um, uh, falling flame evaporators, again, that's part of BMA know-how. Uh, but, but I said the bottom of the uh, this thing, we do have uh, that uh, the juice entertainment system. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for all the questions. Thank you, Omka, uh, for thank answering you. all the questions for the nice presentation. Um, as I told before, um, all the questions uh, we had not the chance to answer them right away. Uh, you can get the answers at the end of our presentation. Um, at least let me announce you the next webinar. It will take place on July 3rd with our experts um, Jose Garrido and Eduardo Lima. They will talk about the smart sequencing topic. Um, you can register for this one on our website too. If you have any problems, just write us an email. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Omka. Thank you, Christine. Stay safe and stay healthy. See you next time. <laughs>